Oh, man. <coughs> Listen, if your nips don't get hard when you take a sip of whiskey, it's not real whiskey. <laughs> My mom's going to love that. <laughs> Alrighty. Mm, this will be our first episode without Lou. I know. I realized that. It's just you and me. All right. Here we go. <laughs> She's rubbing her hands together. <laughs> Hello, cinephiles, and welcome to Silver Screen Sips, a podcast for two idiots talk about movies. And today we will be discussing Karate Kid 3. Yes, there's a fucking third one. Um, just a reminder that there are spoilers ahead for movies and TV shows that you may have not seen yet. So just know you've been warned. Please don't sue our asses. Um, Isaiah is our lawyer. It's called freedom of the of speech. So, uh, yeah, good luck. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Spoiler, Barbie's an Oppenheimer. Margot Robbie plays Oppenheimer's wife. <laughs> <laughs> no, Margot Robbie is literally the bomb. <laughs> <laughs> You see, your, the, they, your they, they mic spray broke. Painted, they, they spray painted. She's in the bomb, right? She's in the big. Uh, she's in what called? Actually, hold up. What the hell was the bomb called? Was it called the Fat Man? The Fat Boy or something? I think it was a Fat Boy. It was the Fat Man and the Little Boy. <laughs> That's what it is. So she's inside the Fat Man, and they just spray painted it pink. <laughs> <laughs> and Ken's in Little Boy. <laughs> oh no, I don't like that. Story. <laughs> oh God, yeah. <laughs> I heard it after I said it. Canceled. And just beep that out. Anyways, why don't we hop into our first segment, Isaiah? We have great we have great headlines this week. We do. We got Keanu Reeves, Jesus, Italians, and Will Ferrell. Um, mm-hmm. You will find out what all that means during this week in Hollywood. Nice. Yeah. Okay. Big Lou. Really feeling that energy. Yeah, looking down for me from the heavens. I hope he is proud of <laughs> mm-hmm. He's like the new Harambe. <laughs> I don't know why. I how. really feel the same energy. Gone too soon, you know? <laughs> Gone too soon and life and the entire world went downhill. Yeah. Lewis also just makes me think of a gorilla. So. <laughs> <laughs> Love you, Lou. <laughs> All right. Well, for our first headline, Netflix has threatened to purge some of their bigger titles in response to the new streaming regulations as the UK government has new regulations for streaming services uh, moving forward from the new media bill, mm. quote unquote. Netflix has begun to preemptively remove its titles that can be deemed to contain harmful content. Failure to do so may cause the streaming service to face fines up to 250,000 pounds, which is as much as your mother weighs. Uh, oh, <laughs> good one. dollars <laughs> Yes. That, see, the, my issue with this is that if this new media bill is to remove like titles or like you get fined to have like a title uh, a movie that contains harmful content that's like nine percent of netflix's like media like their top 10 i would say contains some sort of quote-unquote harmful content Mm. yeah and it's also very um it's a very gray area because yeah it's very vague it's like okay so what defines harmful content is it like something super dark where it's like drug abuse or like domestic violence you know something like a very serious con like very serious content or is it more of like we don't want that person having a shot if they're underage you know where it's like okay it's a show like they're not actually underage drinking it's for the character development i'm not 100 sure on the i don't don't know if anyone has a constitution or whatever their equivalent of a constitution would be yeah. But that nothing like that would ever happen in America. You know how many times people have tried to do that in America? It's never worked because you have freedom of speech. Yes. It's a freedom of expression of art. Therefore, you can't censor things. There are like lines that can't be crossed because there's like a lot. Of, like obviously, there's certain things that you can't do on television or right. or on in movies because nobody is going to want to watch publicly it. put that. Yeah, like like a company like AT and T, right? They have like mm-hmm. direct TV. Yeah. They're not going to put something insane on TV that anyone can watch because then someone could get sued. Right. So they know better. They But they could if they wanted to. <laughs> oh, yeah. They could if they wanted to, but they can't, so they won't. Um, yeah, sure. That doesn't make no sense, but I'll go with that. <laughs> yeah. Um, after a post-Cannes Film Festival tour of Italy, director Martin Scorsese scored a private audience with none other than Pope Francis. The Pope. 
The Pope. And uh, was inspired to make a new film about Jesus. Uh, so this may come as a shock, oh, however. Mary, Mary. <laughs> no, wait, that's not right. No, that's okay. Well, it's about Mary, I think. Yeah. <laughs> I think you literally just said, like, Hail Mary. <laughs> I'm not Italian. I don't know. <laughs> that's Latin, but okay. Uh, yeah, whatever. <laughs> Um, this may come as a shock, however, we would like to remind you that he did make one of the most infamous films about Christianity via The Last Temptation of Christ and also tackled religion again in his other film, Silence. So he's done it twice already. Just saying. The, not the Catholicism, the, the Jesus Christ trilogy. <laughs> <laughs> That's our next season. <laughs> Martin Scorsese's We're Jesus going Christ. religious, guys. <laughs> All right, Isaiah. <laughs> Keep going. Speaking of icons. <laughs> mm. What's more iconic than Martin Scorsese? Oh, you I meant, meant Jesus. I meant Jesus. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Uh, Keanu Reeves reunited with his rock band, Dogstar, what a name, at the 2023 mm -hmm. Bottle Rock Napa Valley Festival. The actor played with his former band in the first public show in more than 20 years. He serves as the band's bassist and backup vocalist. This is just like when... We found out Christopher Lee the Mill. Yeah. <laughs> so this seems more fitting. Yes. But I've never heard Keanu Reeves sing, and now I kind of want to. Reeves recently mm -hmm. opened up about reuniting with Dogstar and how much he missed performing with them. And now they're working on a new album together. You can find the full performance online by searching Dogstar at Battle, Bottle Rock Napa Valley. I don't know what kind of music it is, but with a name like Dogstar, I can only imagine. Universal Studios is now working on their How to Train Your Dragon live action adaptation. What a fucking shocker. Um, Universal's following the Disney playbook. I know. And actually, this movie has a huge like fan base. Like people who watch these movies are like obsessed with them. Who knows? I don't know how the fans are taking it. Um, so Mason Thames, I think is how you say his last name. Thames. Thames, T-H. Like River Tame? Maybe. T-H-A-M-E-S. Um, who starred in Universal's horror hit, The Black Phone, and Nico Parker, the rising actress who was last seen in HBO's The Last of Us as uh, Joel's daughter, are set to star as Hiccup and Astrid in the feature being directed by Dean DeBloy. Universal has dated the feature for a March 14th, 2025, so we got a while to go, um, and is planning on a film shoot this summer, so... I really don't have anything to add to that. <laughs> it's just okay, cool, yeah, good for you guys, I guess. I'm gonna have a uh, How to Train Your Dragon season. It is a trilogy. It is, and we could do the live one as well. So that's already four episodes right there, guys. Yeah, they're gonna do a trilogy. Uh, <laughs> all right, we'll do it in two years. <laughs> now, with the recent release of John Wick Four, and with what seemed to be the end of the franchise, and if you've seen the movie, it's the end. <laughs> mm -hmm. Director Chad Stelhiski has decided that they aren't done yet. They're going to keep going. Lionsgate chairman Joe Drake assured investors in a recent financial call that the company was all in on one more John Wick, mm. which is now John Wick 5 is already in early development. And we'll see if Reeves and Stelhiski return to do more. You know, a studio isn't going to just let a successful franchise die. No, not that easy, especially with all these spinoffs that they're doing. Spoiler alert, John Wick dies, so they're not going to let the franchise die. John Wick dies in four? Yes. It's literally the end. That's why everybody's like, what's the end? Spoilers! <laughs> yeah, spoilers. But like, it's the end of the franchise. That's why everybody's like, why the hell is there a fifth one coming? Jesus Christ. Maybe it'll be like a prequel when he's like a baby and he's just like a five-year-old John Wick fucking <laughs> killing there, people and shit. There is, um, there was a fan theory about John Wick 4 being that, um, it's just him going through the, the circles of hell. What if he, since he dies, what if he's in hell and his next target is the devil? <laughs> Oh my God! That, I would that if they do it. I would love to see it. I would actually. That, that might get me into the theaters. Now, if we can get Danny Trejo as the devil in John Wick. John Wick versus John Wick. <laughs> yes. <laughs> now you're talking. Now I'm going. Ooh. Anyways, let's continue. So you guys remember Will Ferrell, right? Yeah, he's still relevant. Um, We're and is now. Yeah, and is now set to play the legendary NFL coach John Madden uh, in an upcoming film surrounding Madden's life. Uh, now, many of you probably know Madden's name because of his self-titled American football video games, Madden. Really? Oh, my God. 
<laughs> oh my god, you just blew my mind. <laughs> what? It's the same guy? Um, but the man had a crazy career coaching for the NFL, which is what this film, uh, I believe, is going to be focusing more on. So Cameron Clark is is the one who wrote the original script, uh, which David O. Russell has been rewriting. Um, but obviously with the whole writer's strike, everything's kind of up in the air at the moment. But it is set to be directed for Amazon. Um, but anyways, that concludes This Week in Hollywood. You can find all of our sources cited in our Discord channel. You're about to screw it up there at the end, weren't you? <laughs> no, I was going to go into like a sing-song thing, and I was like, well, that's lame. I'm not going to fucking do that and be bullied for it. So, Sorry, guys. She doesn't like musicals, and, you know... It's one I of the really things, don't. <laughs> it's one of those things that we do disagree on. You like musicals? I love musicals. One of my favorite... Well, Hamilton's my, one of my favorite, but I would say... Uh, Les Miserables. Les Mis. Mm, it's pretty good. Yo, okay, this is just for a side tangent. Les Mis is so overdramatic, but it's funny because literally there's a cop who like gets saved by Hugh Jackman who plays a criminal and he's so distraught about it that he kills himself. What the fuck? See, that's, always- I think that's my big thing with, with musicals is that it is all overdramatic for the most part. Yeah, yeah. But it depends on some of them, like top musicals like Chicago, Moulin Rouge, they're all based off like... Plays. Yeah, like plays. So... Mm-hmm. to transfer that like over the topness from a play into a movie you just have to go all you just have to go all out now like this yeah. is not like visually crazy like obviously it's like victorian era and stuff like that but it's not crazy as in like you know moulin rouges and it's on acid <laughs> yeah but like the story itself is super dramatic and it's just funny sometimes <laughs> because he literally the cop who's played by like gerard butler or something no it's russell, russell crowe my bad and he's like, gonna drown or something and he hugh jackman saves him and he goes wait a minute you're the criminal i arrested like 16 years ago oh god i was saved by a criminal and then he jumps off a bridge <laughs> <laughs> i mean same i guess i don't fucking know i think the only music video music videos oh that's different <laughs> sorry the only musicals i've seen um like all the way through is mama mia never seen it that's fine that is acceptable i'd be concerned but did if you, you ever had. see the masterpiece mama mia 2 here we go again no <laughs> nope uh and then um into the woods i never saw that one either james corden was in it i was like nope nah, i'm out <laughs> yeah but emily blunt and anna kendrick are in it ah that is a good that is a good mm-hmm. comparison. it's a good, mm-hmm. good you know. he's not from what i remember his role is isn't huge i could be completely wrong on that but he does sing a song and uh, that's enough cordon for me yeah it's true you know what i would like so i have a list of on my letterbox of musicals that i've seen and want to see um it's called people make cool noises with their voices <laughs> mm. mm-hmm. um, i've seen this list yes so i would say my favorite is the greatest showman mm. it's pretty good with hugh jackman yeah with hugh jackman hugh jackman he actually went on tour uh doing music doing his music because he can huh. actually think like music wow. from that musical or what from multiple like he would he does his own music stuff mm. so he was singing and then he also well, did with, songs like keanu from, reeves <laughs> yes kind of so i need Imagine. what i need is hugh jackman to do a song with keanu reeves yes <laughs> and christopher lee even though he has left i want them to sample his music and make a new song from it yes christopher lee has left the building yes that's the name of the song. Left the building? No, Christopher Lee has left the building. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's an homage. Yes. Uh, I would also say Burlesque is pretty good. Even though the covers is freaking great. Um, mm. Does The Wizard of Oz count? Yes, right? It does, but the way my I've been uh, putting the list together was as more modern. Okay, because I would say that's my favorite musical. The, to me, Wizard of Oz is a movie that just happens to sing, you know? Yeah, yeah, I see that. I, for some reason, I wouldn't classify it as a musical, but I'm like, it technically is because they do progress the story through song. Because that, to me, that's the definition of like a musical. But I just don't, I don't know. I just don't classify, I just don't think of it in that way. I, I can see it. Oh, Tick, Tick, yeah. Boom, also very, very good. With um, Andrew Garfield? Yeah, Andrew Garfield. Amazing. Amazing. Mm. Uh, he plays Jonathan Larson, who actually wrote uh, Rent, which is also a great musical. Mm-hmm. So it plays. he plays the life of the the writer of Rent, which it goes through the whole story of how he made Rent and stuff like that and how crazy it is. Um, also, I can't, I've never seen Wicked on Broadway. That's like the one show I always wanted to That's see. That's the on one I want to see. Yes. 
but they don't show it on Broadway anymore. They they don't they discontinued it like three years ago. But there's they a, were just playing Wicked in Tampa not that long ago. No, I mean like Broadway, Broadway, like the original. No, I know Broadway show. Yeah, and then but they are bringing Broadway. They are bringing Wicked to the big screen with a two part movie. Interesting. Um, actually, I think some of the cast has already been revealed as who will be playing the witches. Uh, let me check. This is going to be part of this week in Hollywood now. Oh, I also need to talk about real quick while you're pulling that up. Um, I would like to just, I saw this while I was looking for, you know, upcoming headlines. Um, so you've heard of the Pope's exorcist, right? The movie? Yes. Yeah. I saw a headline saying that it was coming to Blu-ray. Congrats. I never seen a fucking Blu-ray player in the last 10 years, maybe seven to play it safe. I didn't even know that was a thing anymore. I thought Blu-ray was outdated at this point. And DVD. I was like, what? I don't DVD's even have outdated. a DVD. Yeah, I don't even have a DVD player. If you own an Xbox or yeah. a PlayStation from the last 10 years... You can play it, it at 720 <laughs> if you were 1080. No, it's, no, it's a, it's a, so, okay. DVDs are 720 native. So if you put it into a Xbox or a PlayStation, it will play it, but as a DVD player, because the DVD player is built in. If you put mm. a Blu-ray which is 1080p into an Xbox or a PlayStation. It has a Blu-ray player in, in built in, so it'll play as 1080p. So it depends on the disc you put into it. But it's still 1080. Yeah, but that's the highest any type of DVD. That's any disc will go at the moment. That's, which there yeah. are four, there are four K DVDs, but those are super expensive and not that's worth crazy. it. That's crazy, yeah. Oh, by the way, the cast for uh, Wicked is going to be El Faba, I believe is her name. I've never seen Wicked. Please don't judge me. It's going to be mm. Cynthia... Arrivo, which, um, how the hell, where is, she, where is she from? You're doing great so far. Yeah, I know. Uh, <laughs> if you know who that is, you know who that is. Um, there you go. <laughs> but she's from, uh, she played, uh, she was in Widows and played Harriet Tubman and she's in Luther. Okay. Um, and then Glinda, the witch, is going to play, be played by Ariana Grande. Mm. I saw this casting list and I was like, what the fuck? Yeah, but guess what? Who's playing the wizard? It's going to be Jeff Goldblum and I can't wait. <laughs> oh my God. That makes a lot of sense. So yeah, there's your cast. Jeez. There's a few others, but um, those are the those most are the three mains. Yeah. So that concludes this week in Hollywood. <laughs> um. Anyways, Isaiah. Yes. Would you like to tackle big blues, big brews today? No. Why not? I also want to. So that's the end of this episode. Um. Yeah. <laughs> Fair enough. Fair enough. Point. Um, yeah. Okay. What do you got? Or what does Lou got? I guess. <laughs> okay. Um, <laughs> I'm not good at transitions. We know this. Yes. That's why I'm letting you struggle because it's funny. Um, it really is torture. <laughs> so today we got the Cobra's Fang. Fang? Like T H A N G? Fang? No. Pl- Wait. What did you say? Fang. F A N G. Oh, with an F. <laughs> I thought it was like the Cobra's thing. I was like, that's the weirdest I'm fucking kidding. name. I'm concerned, I'm very concerned but uh, <laughs> Okay. Okay. <laughs> Cobra Fang. Yes, Cobra Fang. All right. Mm-hmm. Now, um, so Lou here wrote the Mai Tai, the painkiller, and the zombie. Kiki has many sign- signature drinks, but one lesser known, but no less delicious concoction is the Cobra's Fang. Like many Tiki inventions, this one is the creation of Don the Beachcomber. The Tiki's really matching up now. <laughs> Most likely mm-hmm. in 1937, while it dropped in popularity for a long time, in recent years it's starting to see a resurgence thanks to its intoxicating mix of, I don't know what that word is. Guy- Guyanese. Guyanese? I think so. Hey, yo, I speak Guyanese. And, okay, anyway. Um, and Jamaican oh, rums, fruit juices, syrups, and botanicals. <laughs> mm-hmm. But the Cobra's fan can be made with one and a half ounces of dark Jamaican rum. Ooh. Mm. Half ounce of 151 proof Deramera? Demara? Demara? Demara. 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 No, Demara. Demara. Like Deradara. I feel like we're really butchering it and people are like, please stop. Just keep going. Uh, One ounce of Falernum. Half an ounce. Half an ounce of, I don't even know, Falernum? 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 All right. Why does he pick the fucking hardest words for us? Can you give, I need like the phonics. I feel like he's making them up. Yeah, we should tell him that from now on. We need the phonics, please. Please give me the phonics. 
a half ounce of lime juice, freshly squeezed, something I can finally pronounce. <laughs> <laughs> half an ounce of orange juice, freshly squeezed. Mm. Half an ounce of, oh, okay, great, great. Here fashionola? We go. Fashion, I feel like it's fashionola. Fashionola yeah. syrup. What the fuck? One I don't know what that is. Okay. I knew, I know how to pronounce absence. <laughs> mm-hmm. Just a dash, just a dash. Um, one dash of bitters. I'm not pronouncing that for Ang- Angostura. Angostura. Uh, you can garnish with a lime wheel or a mint sprig or both. Why not? If you want to get crazy. So how do we make it? We just mix it? Uh, yeah, he didn't give me the dish- instructions. Steps. Either. Add the dark Jamaican rump. Rump? <laughs> hey, yo, wait. The- that's not right. <laughs> I'm taking over. Add the dark Jamaican rum. Demerara. I don't know how to say it. Rum. The Falernum. I really feel like I'm making that a spell. Like, like a wizard. Like, a like I, That's like the name of a body part somewhere. Yeah. Hand me the scalpel for the Falernum. <laughs> it really does. <laughs> I cut off this Falernum. It's, it's too much a nexus. It's right next to the Demerara. <laughs> um, so you're going you're gonna to add the two rums, the Falernum, the lime juice, the orange juice, the fashion Nola syrup, the absinthe, and bitters into a blender with six ounces of crushed ice and blend for five seconds, pour into a high ball glass or a tall tiki mug, and then you garnish with either the lime wheel, mint leaf, or both. I want to get wild. I want to put all of it in there. It's pretty. It's a pretty drink. Um, what do you think? What do you rate it? Well, you know, I love me some rum. And there's no coconut in this one. <clears throat> yes. Finally, a- there is absinthe, though, which has a very strong black licorice taste but you're only doing a dash yeah it's only a dash so i don't i'm not too worried about it however i've never this is finally an exotic drink not exotic what's a tropical drink Mm. that does not have coconut in it because like every single tropical i was talking pineapple (laughs) yeah i was talking to my i was talking to my bartender yesterday and she was like oh yeah what do you call it you don't like any tropical drinks like no because they all got pineapple or coconut or both in it and she's like that's literally Mm -hmm. what tropical things are like i don't want them (laughs) yeah so i just googled what falernum is um, it's either an 11% ABV syrup liqueur, or it could be non-alcoholic from the Caribbeans. No, we need alcohol. It contains flavors of ginger, lime, and almond, and frequently cloves or allspice. I like how they chose the word frequently. Frequently. Oh, it may be oh. thought of a spicier version of orgiate syrup, recalling back to the last episode. <laughs> orgiate. Yeah. Okay. Okay. That doesn't sound too bad then. I give this like a four out of five. I feel like it'd be pretty good. I'd like to try some black rum for once. Um, mm. I do not black rum, dark rum, dark Jamaican rum specifically. But I would also like to point out that the there is a phonic version of Berlinum or whatever it's called. Mm-hmm. However, the phonic version has an upside down E to help you pronounce it. And I don't know what that is. I hate means. that. I hate so when people that, that do that. That doesn't help me. That doesn't help my it, pronunciation. Now I'm more confused. <laughs> we aren't smart. You need to dumb it down for us, people. Please explain it like a fifth grader. Chat GPT. Remember, Thanks. we were homeschooled. I also Googled what fashionola syrup is, and it's supposed to taste mostly like passion fruit, which I love. Ooh. It says, um, while others, so it mostly, people say it's passion fruit, but others say it channels more of a taste akin to Hawaiian punch. Mm. so it's literally like fruit punch flavor this sounds like a drink for you mm-hmm. sounds like you'll have like three or four of these and you'll be like all right give me my keys I, i'm fine I, I can stand i'm sorry and then i'm on the floor but um so you said four yeah no i'd give it a five now if it tastes like fruit punch <laughs> <laughs> okay a five out of five wow knock me on my ass let's go <laughs> <laughs> i don't I don't know. I, I kind of like at first I was a solid three, but then I, when I Googled what the fuck the other things were, I think it's changed to a four, which is very rare for me for like rum and like super sweet tropical drinks. But if I'm in the right place at the right time, like if I'm on a pool by the pool or it's like a fourth of July, you know, kind of like outside kind of day with it sunny and stuff, I might have a couple of these. And it also sounds like a drink that'll get you fucked. Mm-hmm. You've got two ounces of rum and absinthe and the falernum has alcohol in it too. And that's a half ounce. So you have two and a half ounces, almost three with the absinthe. Falernum. That's a lot. And that's also a lot of sugar. <laughs> okay. Uh, so four and a five. Yeah. Not too bad. Good job, Lewis. 
not too shabby. <laughs> he says, thanks. Did I have them in my closet. <laughs> what, what's that, Lewis? You'd like me to take a moment to talk about our sponsor? Sure. He said, How was that? <laughs> was that good? Yes. Was that a, yes. We'd like to take a moment to thank the sponsor of today's episode, Shaker and Spoon. It is a monthly subscription service that gives you bar quality recipes and ingredients designed by award-winning mixologists. Their latest box, Born to Rum, how fitting, Jamaica box, um, features amazing cocktail recipes for rum lovers, not including Cobra Fang, but that's okay. It, you can now. Uh, if you'd like your very own subscription, then go on and head over to shakerandspoon.com and use our promo code SIPS10 to get $10 off your first subscription. Again, that is promo code SIPS10, S-I-P-S-1-0 to get $10 off. Thank you. Anyways. So um, you want to ask me a question? I have a great question to ask you, Isaiah, for mm -hmm. best question of the day. Now, okay. um, obviously, in this film, a lot of the story revolves around a specific location. Um, one Mr. Miyagi's bonsai shop. Right? Not New York, Jersey? No. <laughs> No, no, my friend. Um, so, yeah, this movie revolves a lot around the bonsai shop. Which le leads me to wonder, if you could open up any type of shop in the world, what would it be and why? I want like an elevator pitch here. Ready? Oh. I'm getting on the elevator. I'm a fucking big business guy. I got money for days. OK, I've got stacks in my pocket. You can see it bulging out like a brick. <laughs> That's sounds wrong. <laughs> you tell me you're bricked up right now. <laughs> I'm bricked up, bro. Okay. I am bricked up in the elevator. Bing. <laughs> Let Let's me hear it. it. <laughs> Sorry, I need to look up. I'm staring down right now. Don't look at my fat stacks. Okay. <laughs> what do you what do you want? Oh man, you're I'm taking down. a sip of my whiskey that was just in my briefcase. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, man, you put me on a spot. I don't. What do you want? We have six floors. OK, to go through here. So you guys six floors to get me uh, hooked. Hooked on it. I don't. Well, here. How about this? How about this? Yeah. Pause the elevator. OK, we're stuck for a second. I, I just pulled, I pulled the emergency. Uh, <laughs> so, now you're stuck with me. so how about first? Let's in, let's let's establish what kind of shop it is. And then you have to try and sell me on it. How about that? Uh, sure. Yeah. So you have a little bit of time to think of what you're trying to sell to me. Okay. All right. Don't tell me ahead of time. Just think for a second on what you want to sell to me. Think of a couple talking points. I'll put a little elevator music in and then I'll cue the elevator, like an elevator sound effect of me going in and you walking in and shit. Okay. Let me know when you're ready. Am I, am I, am I pitching it to you specifically as Beth or as just in general? No, I am a business woman. My name is Charlotte. That sounds like a, but I go by Charlie in the business world. Okay, Charlie. <laughs> hey, yo, Charlie, how you doing? I got to make it with the with the big guys, so I got to go by a guy name. So they think I'm a dude, and then they see me like, oh, my God, you've got tits. And I'm like, yep, and I own your business now. <laughs> um, okay, let me know when you're ready, and we'll start this scene. All right, and starting the scene. Hey, yo, Charlie, I see you're super bricked up, bricked up right now. <laughs> I'm bricked up. What do you want? Hey, yo, I got a, I got an amazing idea to, to pitch to you right now, okay? You have six minutes before I reach my floor. Damn, this is the slowest elevator ever. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> it really is. All right, so... I want to build, I want to fund an R&D project where we have a machine that reads your dreams and puts it out as a video file, right? I'm listening. And let me, and let me tell you how we can actually do it. So there mm. is a company who created something called a BSI. It is the brain to spinal cord interface. And it does is it digitally records the brain, finds out what the thoughts it's trying to make, sends it to the spine, and that's how they have been able to get people to be able to move their body parts buzzwords what's your name oh sup my name's isaiah <laughs> uh, i thought you were just gonna say your name was sup no <laughs> it's sup okay isaiah was it your next business partner is my name okay listen 
Let me, I'm going to stop you right here. Um, I need buzzwords. Okay, I'm a businesswoman. Okay, I don't know all the technical aspects. I need you to bring it to me in terms of money. Money? All right. Mm -hmm. You're going to be able to make the future of this is not only in basically every single industry possible, you'll be able to mm. sell. Well, if you want to get nefarious, you can sell it to governments. They can read people's minds. If you want to get mm. real techie, you can sell it to uh, businesses who can, uh, the medical industry, you can sell it to them and they can be able to read people's minds and figure out what the hell's going on. You can sell it to the Department of Defense and they can use it to read uh, during interrogations and figure that out. And you know how much defense spending is in America. Real big. That's a lot of money right there. You can also use it for the masses after you get your defense spending because people can then create a YouTube-like sphere like Twitch where they can upload it to, to the internet. And guess what? You now have an entire community. you will never let it die. Hmm. I like the way you think, Isaiah. Now do you have a prototype? The prototype is in with another company, the BSI people. We would have to talk to them. All right. How much do you want for uh, investment? 51% of the business on my end. I would need 49% of yours, and we're going to take my money, your money, and we're going to build the future. You've got yourself a deal, my friend. Let's go. Sorry. Business partner. <laughs> <laughs> and scene you and got scene. me you said my read your dreams i was like damn that's a fucking good one that is what do you call it? that was my that was my script for um my that was my that was my script my final script for our uh script writing class oh nice <laughs> you remember? you're just reading off the script weren't you i was giving the i was giving the log line to my to my movie. <laughs> <laughs> there you go yeah so that Stuff is copyrighted, trademark. No one can steal that. Ha. 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 In fact, it's intellectual property because I already bought it. <laughs> <laughs> Everything. We have that right. in wording. In, yes, wording. That's how you say it. <laughs> <laughs> Listen, I'm a businesswoman. All right. I didn't say I was a genius. <laughs> I'm a businesswoman. I don't use words. <laughs> <laughs> I use buzzwords. Okay. That's what I use. I only know the wow. word taxes and tax evasion. <laughs> <laughs> all right well that was my question um <laughs> enough of that hope you guys enjoyed our little short film um it's called elevator very creative thank you Welcome to this episode of shark tank the bootleg version off youtube yes it's called fish bowl <laughs> okay <laughs> <laughs> Really, as I said it, I was like, "This is good." And then after I finished, I was like, "Wow, that was terrible." <laughs> you can hear it as I as I finished the sentence. I said "fish" so confidently, and then I was like, "Bowl." Oh God! Really uh, <laughs> Isaiah, <laughs> do you have any some? Uh, do you have any? What do you have today? Do I have? Uh, yeah, I, I have uh, a dumb friend and some facts. <laughs> Who's that? <laughs> uh, okay, I've got my breath. I got some facts for today. I am surprised. Yes, I every I surprise myself every time I end up with facts <laughs> in these movies that end up in sequels. There are not a lot, but again, like last time, I hope that the uniqueness of them all mm -hmm. make up for the lack of it. <laughs> Quality over quantity, you know. Okay, right. Now, Robert Mark Kamen, he's the one who originally wrote all the screenplays, who basically created The Karate Kid. Uh, he originally wanted Karate Kid Part 3 to be a prequel, with the two main leads still involved. The original plot would have involved Daniel and Mr. Miyagi traveling to 16th century China in a dream and meeting Miyagi's ancestors. Okay. Interesting. He, he envisioned the sequel to resemble a Hong Kong-style wuxia film which if you don't know it's basically just like hong kong kung fu films like old school yeah um, think like enter the dragon that kind of stuff okay and would also have a female protagonist somehow despite it being daniel as the karate kid it's done the fall apart you know yes i see our next fact robin lively was cast as jessica andrews Mm -hmm. producers were forced to modify her role because Lively was only 16 at the time of filming <laughs> while, Ryo, while Ralph Malcio was 27 Yee! oh no 
that's illegal. Yeah, even though his character is 17 in the movie, they were like, this is uncomfortable. We can't do that. That's why they're like, she's like, I have a boyfriend, but I'm going to kiss you on the cheek at least. Yeah. So this this situation caused most romantic scenes between Jessica and Daniel to be rewritten as uh, the pair be developed a close friendship instead. Hmm. Uh, uh, I will probably touch on this a little bit later, too, but I actually didn't mind that dynamic. But continue. Yeah, his his riz <laughs> was not there. Thomas Ian, who plays Terry Silver, this was his um, acting debut is actually a few months younger than Ralph Macchio. Oh, wow. Yeah, that was, I was surprised by that. I was like, really? They were completely different. Yeah, like age-wise, I mean. So that's, yeah, that's wild. Uh, when Sean Kanan was called back to audition to play Mike Barnes in yeah. this movie, he wanted to make such a strong impression because he was such a huge fan of the movie. He ended up, when he, the second he could, he, found, uh, he backed Macchio into a corner and began intimidating him for real. And then he said and he never let, and he never let up. <laughs> what the fuck? He got really into it. He was obsessed. He was like really, really into it. Like that's so in the end of the movie, right? Apparently the, the scene where he, the fight is happening, Mike Barnes just starts getting in his face, being like, yeah, no, you're a coward. You're your karate's unreal. He just made he was just making that up. He was just jumping on him. <laughs> is that why he curses so much in that part compared to the rest of the movie? He was just ad libbing. He was literally just like he yeah. got so into it. He just started like just did pretty good. Down. <laughs> yeah. Now, also while filming that scene, Sean uh, Cannon performed his own stunts throughout the movie, including one where he lunged forward and landed on his stomach. And so they did it for 20 takes. Ow. Eventually, he started hurting. And, you know, he was taking <laughs> aspirin for four days to deal with the residual pain until he fell unconscious. And then at the hospital, he was diagnosed with internal bleeding caused by a torn ab- uh, abdominal wall and had to receive 14 staples. Jesus Christ. Oh my God. Yes. He was almost, and then uh, due to that fact, he was actually almost replaced by Brendan Lee, the son of Bruce Lee. That would have been cool. I would have liked that. Macho was apparently very difficult to deal with on set because he didn't like the script and thought it was kind of a pain and was really bad. And he, it was his idea to add the scene where he talks to his mom to explain where she is, where she's taking care of the sick uncle. Sick uncle. That was his idea. Yeah. Alvidson, he also, the director, he also thought that this movie was. Not nah, okay, <laughs> and they kinda, wow. he kind of regrets it. And then also on top of it, the writer Mark he also thought it was pretty bad. And the only reason why he he's the one who wrote it too, and he was like the only yeah. Reason I was why like, why would it. you do that if you didn't even like it? He said he didn't want he wanted to go through with his other idea about the whole mm-hmm. 16th century thing or the sixth century, sixteenth century, whatever the China. But they said we'll offer you more money to write the script that we want instead. And he was like, all right, <laughs> mm, I see. Oh yeah, I mean those are also. Little little bullet bullet point ones. Oh, yeah, thank you yeah. for those. <laughs> little what? Sorry, what? <laughs> you know, little little, little you know, little little gunshot little. things. Skitty pop pop. I'm the scat man. <laughs> Something like that. No, it's not that how that goes. No, that was terrible. I know. Sorry, I'm, I'm aging myself. Scat man. Cutting, cutting cutting that out. All right. Well, thank you for your facts, Isaiah. I suppose Suppose we should talk about the movie. Is that what we do now? Do we even want to? Yeah, I'm not really feeling it. All right, guys. Thank you for uh, joining us today. <laughs> All right. So I actually wrote a decent amount of notes on this one, which I feel like I haven't for the I haven't for a while written this many notes. Some of them I'm not going to probably say just because they're just irrelevant at this point. And they're not really like. Like one of my notes literally just says potting girl in all caps. And I don't know what the fuck that meant. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah, I don't know why I wrote that, but it was a con. So Um, do you write your things like plus and then your note and a negative in your note? (laughs) I write pros and cons at the top and then underneath it, all my bullet points, depending on if it's a good thing or a bad thing towards it. And then usually based off of that, I rate the movie. So are you like... So it's potting. So like, if you say we like this in a month, right? And you don't remember anything. Could potting girl? Could you get that mixed with the big? Oh, maybe that was a good thing. <laughs> yes, because I don't even know now, and I wrote it yesterday. <laughs> what I meant by that? Potting girl. <laughs> potting girl. That's... I like to think I yelled it too. I also wrote the rizzer got rizzed. Um, okay. <laughs> so overall, uh, I actually enjoyed this movie a lot more than I thought I would. And by a lot more, I mean, okay. You thought like, it was be like 
a one a half. Yes, exactly. Then, uh, I was surprised. My expectations were averted and I was pleasantly surprised with the overall like story and the plot. It just kind of felt solid as compared to like the previous one. And even like, like in my opinion, I think if you did number three as number two and just nixed Karate Kid two. So it was just Karate Kid one and three. And it was just a two part thing. It would be perfect. Did there need to be a third? No, but it wasn't bad. It kind of shows like what happened afterwards. It was a good story where it's like, oh, he wants to defend his title. Like that makes sense. And Mr. Miyagi's like lost his job as the janitor or no <laughs> fucking name. maintenance man. Maintenance guy. Thank you. I couldn't think of the fucking name. Um, but anyways, and he made. Yeah, I thought. <laughs> I thought the the overall the story felt solid and it made sense throughout. I think Daniel or Ralph Mucci is like acting in this movie, maybe because he's a lot older, like was just way better, especially like when he fucks up and like almost completely destroys the bonsai plant. And he like comes running into the store and stuff and he's like, I messed up or whatever. And he's like freaking out like that was pretty good to me. I think, too, that some of the like I feel like this movie is really overlooked when it comes to like the some of the shots, like the cinematography. Like we're on, we're in there on the mountaintop and the, it's not a drone obviously. Cause it's fucking 1980s, but the helicopter, I guess shot of like zooming out basically. And they're like on the mountaintop with the water around and the sun's like right behind. That was a beautiful shot. You can't say no to that. No, I knew you were going to fucking do that shit. <laughs> I also wrote, I want Mr. Miyagi's backyard as a pro. So that's good. Yes. It's a great backyard. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. I also think it was very, very based, as the kids say, um, for Miyagi to just forgive Daniel, even after he like basically cheated on him. What a guy like this. Daniel lies and goes behind his back to go cheat on him with another uh, sensei or professor teacher. I'm going to let you struggle. (laughs) And he's just like, it's okay, Daniel, son. The abrupt ending is kind of growing on me. I, it's like become like its own thing. And I'm like, here it comes. Here comes the credits. You know, is it just me or was Terry Silver just cracked out of his mind? This entire he film. He was. That man yeah. Over the snorted top. a line before every single take, especially like when he's in the sauna and he's on the phone. I was like, whoa, oh, dude, God. fucking God. chill. <laughs> I'm gonna make his knuckles bleed. <laughs> I'm gonna do that. I'm gonna do that for you. I was like, dude, whoa, 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 whoa. This he's is like a no pain. <laughs> he's like a fucking minor. Chill. Now that you told me that Ralph Muccio like created that scene where the mom goes to take care of the sick uncle. Now that you said that, I feel bad saying that I hated that part of the storyline. Yeah, it was. Just- it just felt really. I was like, okay, the mom basically just abandoned this kid from the get go. Like they moved to California and then she was just like, fuck you. You're on your own kind of thing. Go hang out with this 80 year old dude that I don't know. And he's just like, OK, OK, ma, you know, <laughs> I also think that Cobra Kai should have just been decued from the get go. There were so many elite. There was so much illegal shit that happened that in a normal ass tournament, no matter what fucking sport it is, he would have just been decued. They wouldn't have been like, that's a warning. It's like, no, he's deliberately trying to murder this child <laughs> like he already had like three warnings from the pre- three previous people that he fought yeah um so i give it a three um i gave the original karate kid i think a four or a three and a half so this one's like just underneath it it's good obviously not as classic as the first um and i'm just going to completely dismiss the second because it doesn't exist Touché. next but yeah i wrote that i think the terry silver he's like a comical villain which he really is it's not not a bad thing all the time it was definitely Mm -hmm. funny like i thought it was entertaining however is it the same vibe that the movie needed i don't think so the movie would like take itself seriously and then you would have him pop in and then it would just be like (laughs) he'd be like comically evil like he'd be hiding around the corner like laughing to himself maniacally while you know daniel's getting like his not his knuckles all bloody and stuff like that he'd be like Mm -hmm. (laughs) like like, okay dude (laughs) he's like around the corner curling his mustache basically 
Yeah, that's, that's what it was. I was fully expecting him to be like putting his, you know, doing his like <laughs> tapping his fingers together, be like, my he's putting his foot into petting a cat in the dark. <laughs> like, Daniel, full on. Yeah. Daniel said, you fall right into my trap. Like, it was so, <laughs> it's so stupid. He ties him onto some train tracks. He's like, your next lesson. <laughs> <laughs> I just think the vibe of him versus the rest of the franchise just didn't match. Yeah. So it was just a little too comical. It was entertaining though, because that it was it was funny. <laughs> oh yeah. The movie starts off with a montage. Again, another recap of the previous movies. Again, didn't have to do it. And I think this one they brought it down. I think this was like three minutes instead. <laughs> yeah. I, I literally skipped it. I'm like, I know this movie already. Um, it's like, okay, I've seen it. And like they basically showed the entire first movie and then like one scene from the second one. It was weird. <laughs> yeah, and like the scenes they choose to show aren't like scenes that have Wait. a huge impact yeah like it's not like yeah oh you should really know this important information is like cool he beat up some kids <laughs> like that's it yeah exactly now i don't know if this has to do with uh ralph Macchio's age or anything like that but it felt like he was just out of breath the entire movie yeah he did look like he gained a little weight this one and i don't know if that's just because he was older or what but he like definitely looked a little heavier and i wonder if that might have played into it Probably was, but also thought that he was being a whiny little bitch the entire movie. Mm-hmm. The entire time, it was just what he wanted, what he was going to do, what he, all this stuff, and then he just kept on whining and complaining, and then he would break it, and then he would break something, and then he would whine and complain some more. The scene he talked about with the the tree, I did his panic of being like, "Oh crap, I really am, like messed up right now. I'm so sorry." Mm-hmm. It like was good, and then to a certain point, he like started over exaggerating his movements, and I was like, oh, "Okay, yeah. we're back to this." Yeah, I can agree with that. Comical. Like when he when he gave Mr. Miyagi the tree, he then like turned around and put his like head and his arms on a table, but he did it in such a like motion. <laughs> yeah. Because like, he like gave him the tree, his hands were out, and then they went like a full extension above his head, slammed on the table, and he slammed his head <laughs> on the table. And I was like, What okay, is this? Hey. A musical? <laughs> <laughs> He's with the person the song. Yeah. No, again, he goes to the cops, right? They finally mentioned the cops this time after all the like 16 acts of casual vandalism and assault. <laughs> and then there's like a random attempted murder that happens and no one wants to bat an eye about it. I know. That just, and it also goes back to uh, Terry Silver being like comically villain, a comical villain being like, oh, what do you call it? I can dump this uranium anywhere. I don't care. <laughs> like, oh, yeah, wow, I was okay. just like, okay, wow, we get it. You're a fucking bad guy. <laughs> and then, oh, um, the whole time the whole movie is about, you know, your honor and that, you know, fighting isn't the answer. That's what Miyagi is going for until Mr. Miyagi has to fight some uh, fight these two and then fighting's the answer. So what's the message? I don't know. I'm yeah. Signals. I think he's like, it's only for defense or whatever. Yeah. But then also he's like, oh, don't go to tournament because it's not about defending your titles, but, you know, you know, just being it's about your honor and stuff. But then he's like, yeah. no, I'm going to go fight it. He's like, now you can fight it because now I've met the assholes. Yes. And they are mean. Now, there's something I have to point out, right? Silver, <laughs> Terry Silver's plan. Terry Silver's plan is to get him to become, he's like to become his sensei, right? Mm-hmm. That is all hinging on Mr. Miyagi not wanting to teach him. Right. So, like, if Mr. Miyagi said, okay, yeah, I'll teach you to defend your title, what is Terry Silver going to do? Like, he literally can't replace him as the sensei or do anything. His entire plan falls apart if Mr. Miyagi said, yeah, I'll teach you. <laughs> like, that's it. Yeah, I guess they would kind of just be like, well, I guess we just got to hope our guy's fucking good. So, yeah, this is everything. So the, it's very, very easily just to it just falls apart like a house. Yeah. Of cards. I guess. Yeah. Then also, I guess you just do whatever you want and not get disqualified from the tournaments. Just warnings all around. Yeah. <laughs> you just beat That's a third warning. I love how it's just like, yeah, you can literally almost kill the kid and you'll just get minus one point. It's fine. But yeah, that's my notes. And uh, I gave it a two out of five because, you know. Wow. It really could have been better. But also, I don't think it was necessary. Yeah, that's that's where I'm at, where it's like the first one is fine just on its own. You didn't I don't know what the fuck they're doing with this next one. The, the next karate kid, which is our next episode. The next karate kid and the next episode of the next. <laughs> mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, I don't know what's gonna happen here? And I, uh, I'm not looking forward to it. That's it. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, So thank you, everyone, for joining us today. Be sure to follow us on Instagram so you can get the latest updates on the show and be sure to share us with your friends and family. 
Um, our next listeners episode is right around the corner. So make sure to email us with any movie suggestions you'd like us to watch and review at silverscreensips at gmail.com. Um, and next week, unfortunately, we will be diving into the 1994 film, The Next Karate Kid. But at least we'll have a very special guest with us, uh, Miss Tiffany Bartok. So tune in for that, at least. Tune in. Never say that again, please. (laughs) All right, we'll see you guys next week. How do I stop this?